Hello, welcome to DM Neurology Made Easy. This is the 24th episode of 5 Neurophilia Quick Revision Series. Let's see the part 5 video of Parkinsonism. Deep brain stimulation has been uh, useful in many uh, diseases like uh, dystonias, tremors, uh, even epilepsy it has been tried. It has been also tried in depression, uh, even Tourette syndrome. So many diseases it has been tried. So deep brain stimulator uh, stimulation thus seen uh, in Parkinson's disease has shown good results, especially in uh, deep brain stimulation in specific nuclei. That is, we have seen the basal ganglia circuitry. So we put, we stimulate certain nuclei. We either increase the dopaminergic secretion or stimulate the uh, uh, neurotransmitter release from the certain nuclei or decrease the stimulation with the help of deep brain stimulation targets. So my question here is actually, which one of the following DBS targets leaves only the tremor symptoms in PD patients? So tremor, uh, even essential tremor also could be treated with a deep brain stimulation. So this question could be modified. Which one of the following uh, DBS targets uh, relieves tremor symptoms in essential tremor? Then also if same options are given, you, you should have an answer to that. Okay, most of them have answered it as deep, uh, subthalamic nucleus. So the answer here is thalamus. So we Wim nucleus of thalamus. So we have to know that DBS could be used in all these kinds of diseases. Uh, basically in PD, essential tremor, dystonias, etc. Epilepsy, it has been tried. Others are uh, actually not used that, at that common, uh, just uh, study based. So what is this DBS? DBS as we have seen, it's actually we are stimulating or manipulating the uh, release of neurotransmitter from a certain area of the brain so that the functionality is maintained. So what went wrong in case of Parkinsonism we had discussed last time. So what went wrong in the direct pathway? There is actually inhibition of uh, thalamus. So we had inhibition of thalamus in case of uh, direct pathway. Here we had seen inhibition, so decreased. And there is stimulation of uh, indirect pathway, so more negative impact on the thalamus here. So again, there is decreased output from the thalamus. So, so this is one of the nuclei which has more hyperstimulated here. So these two are the areas which are severely affected in case of a Parkinson's disease. So, so if you have to decrease the symptoms in case of a Parkinson's disease, that is the trapped symptoms in Parkinson's disease, we have to put an electrode, that is DBS electrode here, deep brain stimulation here. And as we know, in case of tremor, if you want to decrease tremor symptoms, it's a hyperkinetic movement disorder. Tremor is actually increased activity. So in case of tremor symptoms, we can put an electrode. Here. So three areas usually, where we put DBS electrodes are actually subthalamic nucleus, most common, followed by GPI, globus pallus interna, then thalamus. And thalamus, if you put an, a deep brain stimulation electrode, it mainly uh, 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 elevates tremor symptoms alone, not the other symptoms of rigidity and uh, bradykinesia. So that is regarding uh, deep brain stimulation. So, uh, which one of the following is not a mechanism of action of saphenamide? Studies uh, by Dr. Rub, uh, Rubam sir has been done from Hyderabad. Uh, one of the studies from uh, India only. So, that's a proud thing for us. So, saphenamide drug is actually a Mao B inhibitor. That all we know that last time we had discussed in the last class regarding Mao B inhibition of saphenamide. So, which one of the following is not a mechanism? It has, it is not a single, it has not a, uh, it has got multiple mechanisms rather than just a Mao B inhibition. So, what is the other mechanism of, uh, so the, because of this multiple mechanism, it has got a good effect. So, in a patient with, who is on levodopa and is having a side effect of levodopa, that is dyskinesia, if you add this drug, which is very useful, and we add this drug at a dose of 50 milligram OD for a two weeks and then up titrate this drug. So it's a highly selective and reversible MAOB inhibitor, unlike the others. So what have, is wrong with this selectivity and reversibility is that if there is some Mao A action, that is Mao A action, what happens is that if Mao A, a action is the action is there, then there is chance of cheese reaction. 
and the mao a is actually inhibition is needed only for as we know is needed only for psychiatry and not for uh, our movement part so mao selective mao b inhibition is necessary for parkinsonism and what happens is if there is uh, if it occurs there is increase in the dopamine which is needed for our parkinson's patient and this results in what is called blockage of sodium and calcium and thus as we can see the staphenamide causes blockage of sodium and calcium channels within the glutamine yeah you can see glutamine and thus there is inhibition of glutamine rather than gaba so sodium channel blockage calcium channel blockade and glutamine in turn is blocked so that is regarding safinamide which is a newer drug in parkinson's disease so that was regarding so this is an mri so we discussed last class regarding a t2 weighted image this class regarding a t1 weighted image where we had a hyperintensity in the basal ganglia and this is actually a sw image or subtraction weighted image so this is actually a subtraction weighted image where we see look for either bleed or calcification so swa image is uh, is shown here and we have this region this is actually midbrain region if you see this is the midbrain here okay i think uh, you made out the midbrain here so what is the sign shown here what is the sign shown here this is question number 14 i guess sign discussed above so swallow that is actually a swallow with her tail there the sign discussed above is seen this is actually a swallow tail sign swallow you can see that in this question we had seen that there is a swallow with a tail shown there this is a swallow tail sign this is actually a normal finding which is seen in normal individuals and uh, this has been found to be a new finding earliest finding in case of uh this is actually a normal finding and when this is lost this has to be uh, this has been a sensitive finding in case of idiopathic uh parkinson's disease so i'll uh, just uh, discuss about it a more just uh, one more thing i wanted to just we saw a midbrain there i just wanted to you to answer this question which among the following is the most uh, abnormal representation of the midbrain which is a bad bad midbrain among the following if this is an sw image as shown below which is the worst midbrain shown here just try to answer this this is this is a fun question so just wanted to tell you that actually swallow tail is actually a normal pain so black and thing is actually what is normal and in the, in between this black we have a hyperintensity here this is actually normal finding this is swallow tail sign in between the swallow we get a uh hyperintensity and if the swallow tail is lost completely black and out that is abnormal and that is found to be a newer sensitive finding in case of parkinson's disease so the this is a new uh, thing which has been come up so as you can see that this is this is due to something i'll tell you so uh, in case of parkinson's disease as you know that uh, it you starts unilaterally so this is actually the normal side so if it is actually one sided parkinson's disease you are prone to get mri finding that is sw image you are prone to get absence of swallow tail in one side so and if it case of an advanced parkinson's disease you get bilateral uh, absence of swallow tail sign so why this occurs is because uh, that uh, hyperintensity here na this white thing is due to some material called nigrosome 1 which contains less of iron and it's uh, less of iron is there and in, in case of parkinson's disease less of iron and uh, more of dop uh, dopaminergic neurons and when there is depletion of dopamine of the special area there is accumulation of iron here and that area iron in this sw image iron is actually a by that is why bleed and all get blackened in case of an sw image so sw image um, i made you aware of so this is actually regarding nigrosome which is has a highest concentration of dopaminergic neurons in the uh, this area that whitened area you see and in case of pd there is depletion of this nigrosome and then hence there is loss of solar tail sign so 
just remember that absence of solar tail sign is seen in parkinson's disease and it was found to be a newer uh, imaging modality of high sensitivity for detecting early parkinsonism and it is helpful in differentiating it from essential tremor and other mimics of parkinson's disease and normal solar tail sign is a found in normal individuals so uh, try to see this video um uh, The first video is actually a gate video where the patient is walking with a white based gait. So, and this is actually a patient with uh, having difficulty in uh, this, uh, having this study of cocaine. Uh, so, she is unable to do a rapid alternating movement properly. And uh, three months, three to four months, and she has been having severe spider for past few months. ിസോഡ്സ്ട്രിമിറ്റീസ്മി uh she has got as you had seen these findings uh, gait i couldn't show uh, and she has got strider what do you think uh, 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 yeah, so this is actually a parkinson plus syndrome everyone should answer uh, it's a straightforward question no so more of cerebellar signs we had elicited the cerebellar signs more the, rather than uh, parkinsonian features since she had a rapid onset of symptoms we worked, worked up for other uh, features of other causes of rapid onset autonomic dysfunction with cerebellar findings so this is actually a msc you know the other findings in msc where in mri you have the hot cross bun sign and all so we have a constellation of findings of parkinsonism there will be cerebellar findings and autonomic dysfunction which could be either you in the form of urinary symptoms in males you have erectile dysfunction and as you have because of their uh, autonomic dysfunction there will be cold clammy extremities and there will be a uh, orthostatic hypotension we have studied the value would be 30 bar 15 and uh, as you know the strider would be there this patient had severe strider so that is regarding msc so this is a question taken from bradley uh wilhelm uh, lynch disease is associated with which of the following uh, diseases i just wanted you to remember this uh, disease it's difficult to remember uh, it's just ftd 17 which was previously called as wilhelm lynch disease it's there in bradley just i wanted to make your notice take take your notice to this question so it's actually ftd p 17 it's commonly uh, coming uh, the question ftdp 17 is commonly asked so this is actually there so this could be also asked so some drugs in uh, case of orthostatic hypotension the norepinephrine uh, uh, precursor doxedopa approved for uh, by fda in pd is uh, actually useful in which of the following diseases the answer is orthostatic hypotension so orthostatic hypotension in case of parkinsons or even parkinson's disease patient is prone to have orthostatic hypotension it's not that a patient presenting with parkinson's disease uh, having orthostatic hypotension should be branded as a msc or uh, msap or msc it's that uh, if uh, so orthostatic hypotension can be managed conservatively with salt supplementation or you can give a, a, a fludrocortisone midodrine or droxidopa these are the drugs which are used for treating orthostatic hypotension hypotension in case of parkinson's disease and uh, which among the following drugs is not useful in uh, treating the wearing off effect so what we are talking is, is actually regarding the drug uh, drug induced that is uh, drug side effects of parkinson's disease definitely the answer should be baclofen uh, so what is duodopa more studies that is actually levodopa carbidopa infusion gel that is combination of that is actually duodopa we have dealt with comp inhibitors and mao inhibitors which increase the carbidopa that is levodopa within the 
uh, neural junction. And baclofen is, uh, is used to treat dystonia rather than the wearing of effect. So this is a table in Bradley, uh, which deals with the fluctuations in Parkinson's disease, drug-related fluctuations. It could be either wearing off, dyskinesias, morning dyskinesias, and on-off fluctuations. So uh, baclofen and uh, Botox injections, etc., are useful in case of morning dyskinesia, also dystonias. And if you chew or crush the first dose, and uh, even uh, drink it with Pepsi and all, uh, that also will relieve morning dystonias. Others, any drug can be used, even amantrin can be used for wearing up as well as dyskinesia. We have uh, seen in the last class that one of the MCQs commonly asked this, drug-induced dyskinesia, most commonly used drug is amantrin. So this is one of the tables in uh, Bradley. So this is the duodopa, LCIG gel, which can be either given by NG or uh, PEG, nasogastric or PEG. So as you know, more studies are there going on regarding uh, stem cell therapy, which has uh, not shown any success till now regarding Parkinson's disease, uh, then uh, regarding um, many new drugs and gene therapy in case of Parkinson's disease. And uh, so that is the importance of this question. So as we have seen, genetics have come up in Parkinson's disease. We have come to know that um, one of the diseases, that is Gaucher's disease, uh, which is uh, associated, which has an association with Parkinson's disease. So Gaucher's disease, how it is associated with Parkinson's disease, uh, try to read and uh, if you get it wrong, also no problem, but uh, just to know that there is an association between GBA and SNCA gene. GBA is associated with Gaucher's disease. There is a chance that Gaucher's disease commonly shows signs of Parkinson's disease. And the wrong answer in this is actually en encodes the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. And uh, what is the drug of choice in psychosis in case of Parkinson's disease? So as we know, this antipsychotics acts through dopamine receptors. They act by uh, blocking the dopamine receptors. And what happens in PD is that if you block the dopamine receptors, the motor symptoms will aggravate. So what happens is if you give a, a Parkinson's disease having a psychosis, if you give this antipsychotics, they are prone to increase, their motor symptoms are prone to increase. So what will you do in such a case? So that is why one of the antipsychotics which has been recently approved is actually Pimav answer. The haloperidol, as you know, is actually a, a typical antipsychotic, which is more D2 receptor. And the rest of them are all acting through dopamine. And Pimav answerin is actually a serotonin uh, selective. Uh, it is actually SSIA, that is serotonin uh, inverse agonist. So SSIA, Pimav answerin. So that is one thing. So I think uh, with this, we have uh, completed the advanced part of Parkinsonism or the hypokinetic movement disorder.